What is up, everybody? It's your boy Nerdicane coming at you again, right here. This is I've done a, I've already done a video on this one. So, uh, Strange Skies Over East Berlin, number one, go check it out. I this is right here, as I was about to say, um, this is the best miniseries of 2019 in comic books. If this isn't at least nominated for an Eisner's, then the Eisner's are as pointless and and vapid as a lot of people say they are now. This was absolutely excellent. I love I love sci-fi, and I've said before in 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 the videos that good sci-fi tells a story to the audience, but it also asks a question. Like Watchmen. Watchmen tells the story. Watchmen tells the narrative of those characters. But at the very end, it asks a question. You are, it re you realize that you are the person who got R Rorschach's journal. It asks you the question, what do you do with that knowledge? Do you hold it and let the world live in that perfect lie, that perfect joke that, uh, that was crafted? Because it is sort of a utopia. Or does the truth outweigh it? Do you need the truth? It, that's what it asks the reader. Um, other comic books have done that as well, as, as has asked the reader, it, you know, it tells the story. And then at the end of it, it asks the reader. And this does a great job. It tells the narrative of these four people. Um, well, really like three, this person, this person, part, point five and one, one point five, point five. Uh, it tells about that, but I've already done this one, so we're not really gonna focus on that one. Um, it's really refreshing to read a comic book and not be able to see the big picture. Like you read, you know, you sort of read these comic books coming out of out of Marvel nowadays, and you can already tell what's going to happen. You know, you, you can tell from the writer, you know their tendencies, you know the tendencies of the characters, you know the tendencies of, of whatever company it's coming from. Um, what was that one? Uh, one undiscovered country. You knew it was going to be like a Republican hellscape, Mad Max world, things like that. You know, um, if certain writers are writing the book, the white blonde guy is always going to be the villain. But this, I had no idea. You think the protagonist of this is the protagonist. And you find out he's actually sort of a villain in his own way. Um, you find out that all of these people, and this is kind of what connects all of these characters in this, all of these people have done things and they, there's truths that they don't want to face, that, they, that they've kind of buried. And you know this is important when I, you know, I, I, I put page markers and things like that. I love the history of the Cold War. I love the history of aliens. I know uh, I'm, I'm very much into the, the alien research and things like that. But right off the bat, it just shows you that just how things worked in the Soviet Union. When, when somebody who was in an agency, when they wanted an answer, um, it says, you know, they, they, they may not know the truth, but they know a lie. And what they do is they, if, you know, they can't prove that that's a lie, they would just throw you in a box until you decided to tell the truth. They would use that, and then they would use that truth to sort of turn you against the people that they wanted. They used this person throw him in a box for a while, let him suffer, let him starve, let him sit in that little box until he's willing to give up um, his friends at this, at this bar. Uh, the Soviet Union basically not really rewarded you, but expected you to spy on... There was just this level of mistrust that, that they cultivated in, in society. And that's why, you know, people in Russia don't really smile. You know, if you smile at somebody, it's seen as like, you're up to something, you're plotting on them, and something, it's very, it's very disturbing to them. Um, let me go to the next, I'm gonna skip around. There were things in here that, I don't wanna ruin this, and I wanna, I gotta try to do three, three at the same time. So the main scientist, he talks about this right here. Um, he was part of the space program. He said, uh, you touch the stars, and you ask the great question. The great question is, he's probably a Christian in this, and it's still a little vague, He's probably a Christian in all of this Soviet Union where they distrusted. You had to be, to be part of the Soviet Union, you had to be an atheist. Um, he gets into space and he's asking questions. It's like, why are we, that's the big question. Um, why are we here? Is God up there? You know, that's like that. And he just hears silence. And 
he struggles with that. And he struggles with the fact that, you know, he was part of the space program that found this alien. And, you know, he says, we buried it and we locked it away before we even understood it. And, the, the, you know, that's the thing that he's, he's troubled by. He's troubled by the reaction that he's taken. And he's part of this. And he's basically just said, okay, yeah, we're going to lock this away because we don't understand it. Um, then you get, the, you get the reveal of the alien and you start to see... Uh, this woman, you don't really know. You see her in the first one, but I didn't really know who she was. Uh, and then you start to, it starts to unfold. You know, all three of these people, all four of these people are locked down in this um, facility, the scientific holding facility for the alien and the alien's trying to get out. The question that it asks you at the end, I'm not going to spoil the end of this. I'm not going to spoil any of this. I want you to go buy it. I want you to go buy it. As I said, I'm not kidding it's not hyperbole when I say this is the best miniseries of 2019. It doesn't try to stretch itself out for 50 issues. It gets in, tells it tells you who the people are, makes you not like, makes you like some, not like others. And then as the story progresses, you realize that each of these characters are actually the culmination of their circumstances. You find out he that she was part of, it looks like the Battle of Stalingrad. She holds... Um, you know, a great sadness that she survived and probably her husband or boyfriend or, or somebody or brother um, didn't survive. You know, she's, it is a point in here where she says, I'm sorry I survived. Um, and she, you know, she had to see all of that. She had to live with all of that. Um, yeah, actually, it's what this, and it's kind of cool what this alien does. You start to realize in this issue, number three, that the alien while it has its own motivations and you're not sure if those are uh, malevolent or benevolent, you start to see that it's a conduit. Whoever it touches, yes, it kills a lot of the people that it touches, but the people who it touches and they survive, they sort of carry a shared, they kind of give, give it its, its uh, memories. And you see between these three characters, they start to have each other's memories they start to understand each other's memories and that's where you start to question is this alien should it be locked up is this alien like if this alien got out and got into greater society yeah it would probably kill a lot of people but it would create an understanding between people that could bring uh an actual world peace an actual utopia and that's sort of what the to me that's what utopia is utopia isn't really one you know one ideal one ideology uh utopia would be that everybody sort of understands why people are that way you know and they accept it you know if if people could do that that's what harmony would be in the world but uh i digress i get into this this dude the main character um god i forget his name but it's almost this is almost a story where the names don't even matter. It's it's the personalities, it's who they are, it's what they're dealing with. You realize that he is CIA. He's um an infiltration operative. He infiltrates into these, you know, these sort of dictators that we were propping up in the 70s and 80s and he if there's a communist insurgency, he gets in, he gains their trust, he um you know, he finds out who the people are and then he sells them out. And in this one case with this one woman, he actually starts... Oh, yeah, here, here it is, right here. I want to read this to you. And you, the man in the dark, are you saving the world? Or are you just keeping it safe for people like you? Using the dying gasps of power to starve the future. And lie to those who actually want to change it. This is where he starts to, like... Feel it. He starts to, to doubt himself. He starts to hate himself because yes, he is propping up this this di this dictator that they show in in another scene, like this guy, um, over this woman that he you know I don't know if he fell in love with her, but he could really sort of see where they were coming from, see what they wanted. They wanted to change that. They wanted to have um, a more equal society, but that was not what. His orders were, his, his orders were infiltrate, identify, and then apprehend. And that's what they did. And that's why you see this. That's why you see that woman is haunting him because that was his, his big failure. That's the thing that he regrets in his life. Um, 
he is somebody, he, he's an American who poses as other people and he starts to doubt what he's, he's starting to hate what he's become. Um, the Russian lady sort of hates that she survived and, you know, the, the things that she's done afterwards. And I'm going to skip the rest of this book. Like I said, I'm skipping a lot of this. I want to do it all in one and I'm skipping a lot of this. And then you kind of realize, you'll realize why afterwards. But uh, getting into this one, like right off the bat, she figures out, she says your accent is terrible. And he's like, he understands that, you, he, that she knew the whole time because of his bullshit accent. Um, he's CIA, he was in, in Berlin helping people get out. You know, he's infiltrating, he's gathering information, he's infiltrated the, the KGB, um, and, he's hel and on the side he helps people get across the wall. Um, but then, you know, she plays out, she dies. Uh, but then you see through, because the alien is touching him, because the alien has touched the, um, I guess the commissar, you see who he was. He was a German in, or he, yeah, he was a Ger he was a Jew in Germany uh, leading up to World War II, and he was thrown into the concentration camps. This country, and you see, you realize that the country that he was born to, the country that he grew up in, um, hated him his whole life. And as he says, uh, you, so you joined the only flag that you ever, that ever saved you. Hide yourself within it. Lose yourself and to it. He realizes that he's at a point. You know, he he went in there and became part of part of the uh, a Russian agent because he felt that would make him stronger. To felt to, you know, the Russians were the only ones who ever liberated him. They they swept through and they destroyed. And as you see in this page, he's talking about yes, I was a German, and yes, the war was over, but the people all around me. They only stopped hating him and only stopped persecuting him because their side lost the war. They were part of that. They were, um, if they weren't actively part of it, they were actively, they were complacent to it. And that's how he feels individually about that. And um, that, you know, that's sort of what led this German to become uh, a Russian agent. And I don't think I'm going to show any, uh, much more of this. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't want to spoil this. I want you to go out and buy this. This is worth buying. Um, it's so refreshing to see something from Boom, something original, something really good come from Boom Studios when Boom is just really known for, you know, kind of sort of like IDW. They buy licenses. They buy um, other people's IPs, and then they try to make some money off of that. Like, uh, I know they have Steven Universe. I think Boom has the Power Rangers. Power Rangers is a really good selling. Uh, Power Rangers is actually a really good comic right now. It's really well good. It sells really well. This I think this settled around six thousand uh, a month as far as sales. It deserved a whole lot more. It deserved a whole lot more attention. Um, like I said, this is probably the best miniseries that I've read. Probably definitely one of the best comics I've read all year, all uh, all through twenty nineteen. Um, in a weak industry, in an industry where the big two just generally are vanilla and they're just not very entertaining. It's really nice. It's really nice to see this. So I'm going to wrap this up. This was a really great comic. I hope you guys go out and buy it. You could probably find all four of these on your local comic shop walls right now. Go buy it. Uh, totally worth a read. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. You guys go out. Have a good day. Bye.